All right, OK. Now, in all seriousness, and uh, this is a serious subject, let's talk about Tex Walker because it has been a horrendous week for football. It has, I yeah. Know, and, I'm not and talking about Tex Walker in particular. I'm talking for football yep. and the fact that it's 2021 and we still haven't grown up. Former captain of a, of a footy club uh, being uh, fined $20,000, suspended for six weeks. The last three matches of this year, the first three of next year, there's still some uh, debate still to be had. Does he actually return? That's the, the one public statement Taylor Walker has made since, uh, since being found guilty of this racial uh, situation that evolved out of a sandful okay, match. Talk where, us through this. OK, Taylor Walker's circled there. The game was played locally. Obviously, Crows are playing against North Adelaide and there was a, a comment made by Taylor Walker, which we're not going to even... Uh, allude to here, but it was uh, overheard or, or heard by a member of the Crows coaching staff, um, training staff. Training and staff. I, I think, TJ, if there's one small positive to come out of this, it is the fact that this footy club has dealt with it the way it did. It, it obviously addressed it internally and then, and then referred it to the AFL. And, and I, I think that is part of the, the process that we're not going to tolerate this. In, in other instances, in other examples, it may have been attempted to be swept aside, given the nature of it. And I think that's one thing the industry can take out, that the AFL did um, oversee it after it was referred to it by the club. OK, so you, you, you say the club's handled it well. Yes. Uh, but, Kane, there's one key component missing in all this, isn't there? I can't believe he hasn't spoken publicly, Taylor Walker. Now, as difficult as it would be and as distraught as he is, and we all understand that he has to have faced the media by now, this finding was handed down on Friday morning. We are Sunday morning now, and how fast the media cycle moves. He hasn't sat down and spoken and explained his side of the story and shown his remorse. He's left that to Matthew Nix, which we'll get to, who was distraught. He's left it to Tim Silvers, the new CEO of Adelaide, he has to speak to Taylor Walker. He has to. And the longer he doesn't, the worse this gets for him and his reputation. OK, so in what forum would you like to see that, Kane? Like, a media conference? Like, you know, let, I don't want to reopen old wounds, but when Eddie Maguire was caught up in a, in a racism storm, there was a media conference. There was about 30 cameras and 60 journos there, right? And he faced the music for about 45, 50 minutes. Taylor Walker, has it got to be similar to that? I mean, you can't just go into a, a, a cushy radio studio with a couple of mates, surely. Well, that's my concern. My concern is he's going to speak with Triple M to Mark Rusciuto, his business partner and mate and board member at the Crows and Chris Dittmar, and, and it'd be a, an interview like that. It has to be, as you say, you open it up, like, like Matthew Nix was forced to do on Friday in tears. But uh, And this also caught my attention a little bit on Friday morning with, with Mark Rusciuto had this to say about the incident. Good, strong words by Tex, um, which he needed to do. He's owned it, and now he's got to live it. Um, so this is going to be a good lesson for everyone because there's a lot of casual racism that happens out in society, and we laugh about it at times, um, but we all probably don't realise how much damage it does really cause. And as I said, we all need to learn from it. What, what, sorry, Sergio, I think um, the he healing process... That's, that's the start of it, I think, for a lot of people, uh, which will take a long time if, when Tex does pour his heart out to the football industry and, 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 and falls on his sword in a sense to say, I don't know why it came out of my mouth, but I can't apologise anymore. Uh, but I do, a lot of people feel, can he play again? I hope he does, because I think that'll also help the healing process, that this isn't the last time we remember Tex Walker for mm. and that he continues to play on uh, next season. Can, can I just ask, referring to Mark Rusciuto there, Kane, um, what, what, what is the definition of casual racism? Well, uh, I think he's trying to lessen what was said. Can we, can we just say, and Damo said we won't repeat what was said, which we won't, can I just say this wasn't casual racism? This was as vile a comment as you could make. So let's not lessen it by saying Taylor Walker has good relationship with Indigenous teammates. Let's not do that, and I've heard that a couple of times, and certainly don't refer to it as casual racism. It was anything but that this was the worst of the worst. I think that phrase has got to be removed full stop. I think that has been a learning out of the uh, AFL examples of, of racism, which have been public, very significantly public, since 1995. But it wasn't just uh, the comments made by Mark Rusciuto, Kane. It was also, to me anyway, the AFLPA referring in its statement to not Taylor Walker, but, but Tex. And again, we just highlighted it, one paragraph there. There's two other references to Tex. Um, I don't feel that statement was strong enough. I mean, the AFLPA puts out statements when 
when fans of footy clubs say and do things and they call for, for life bans, and that's all well and good, but now this has happened to, to one of their own, and, and I felt that that statement delivered Friday wasn't as strong as it needed to be at that point in time, given it, it came out after the AFL... What did you want them to say? Something a bit more stronger than, than the, the references to Tex. And, like and the Crows have been. Like the Crows mm. have been. I mean, the Crows yeah. could not have been stronger. I don't think no. the Crows could have been stronger. I think the yeah. AFLPA could have been stronger. Mm. And, and to your point too, Lotto, at one stage, and it's not a priority now, and it's well down the track, but Taylor Walker, as part of this whole process, does need to have yeah. some support given his way. But I'm talking well, well down the track. But it is all part of this overall situation. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I just don't know what can be done to stamp it out. It's just, you know, Eddie Betts had the, the, the wristband, yep. you know, the plaster tape with it on there. And, I mean, I just hope that, you know, children your age, for example, grow up in a generation where it's completely unacceptable. But unfortunately, you know, when they're hearing stuff like this, it, it's hard to sort of, like, get their mind in that mindset where it's not acceptable. Well, we can't stop the public, unfortunately. Uh, we should, but uh, that doesn't surprise me when comments are put towards Betts and Eddie Betts and these type of guys. But when it's coming from someone within the AFL fraternity, that's what shocked everyone. I never thought we'd see that again. No, yeah. and let's hope we do never see it again.